Hello, and thanks for watching Focus, a show that focuses on community, unity, and service. I'm Chris Giard. Our next featured nonprofit is the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center. The Stowe Center preserves and interprets Stowe's home in Hartford and the center's historic collections. It promotes vibrant discussion of Stowe's life and work and inspires to commitment to social justice and positive change. My guest is Elizabeth Burgess, the Director of Collections and Research at the Stowe Center. And full disclosure, she is my sister. Elizabeth, thank you and welcome to the show. Hey, Chris, thanks for having me. <laughs> so uh, let's start off by telling our audience a little bit background of Harriet Beecher Stowe and, and her impact that she had on the anti-slavery movement. Sure. So Harriet Beecher Stowe is Connecticut's foremost woman of literature. She was the best-selling novelist, American novelist of the 19th century. So literally everyone knew her name. And part of this is because she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, the best-selling anti-slavery novel. Um, and it really galvanized, like changed the minds of many people um, in that decade leading up to the Civil War. Um, and change their minds about slavery and what it really meant uh, as a human condition to be enslaved. So Stowe um, became an author because she was part of this humongous family of um, 11 children, the Beecher family, and their father, the Reverend Lyman Beecher, was the foremost Calvinist minister of the 19th century. So everyone, kind of like the Kennedys of the 20th century, mm -hmm. I hate to say Kardashians of the 21st century because that doesn't fit, um, but in, in the reputation where everyone knew who the Beechers were and what they were up to. Um, so Lyman raised all of his children to be uh, movers and shakers, to do something. Even the daughters, his daughters, who in a traditional sense um, at that time would never have had a public sphere, public role. Um, but the, each three of them out of the four did, which is amazing. And all seven of the sons, uh, Stowe's brothers, became ministers because that was the platform for which you could really um, have a play a big role besides education right. in the culture at the time. Yeah. So... Harry Beecher Stowe is raised by this really strong man. She's the middle child. She kind of observes and internalizes what's going on, what her brothers are learning, how to debate, um, how to make an argument and, and a, a good case about it, um, and really starts to become a writer and putting her thoughts into how she writes an argument and practices her craft. And she's coming up at an age in the 1830s, 40s, 50s, getting married at the time. Um, when there's all of this cultural turmoil, political turmoil around uh, anti-slavery, kind of like today in a way, um, in our racial injustice uh, discussions and, and what's happening politically. Right. Now, mm -hmm. what I found interesting is that Harry, she didn't actually write Uncle Tom's Cabin when she lived in Connecticut, correct? She did not, no. It's a common, maybe I'm a commoner, don't know my history, but no, I found that interesting. Can you talk a little yeah. about that, you know, when she wrote it, where she was, sure. um, and how that, you know, how she was maybe inspired for the writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, so full disclosure, she was born in Litchfield, Connecticut. Uh, her father had the congregational church there for a long time and attended Miss Pierce's um, female seminary academy, uh, which is really uh, was a, a strong um educator at the time for women specifically, equal education. Mm -hmm. So she's got this, this strong um, base to start from. So she writes Uncle Tom's Cabin when she's 40 years old. She's living in Brunswick, Maine. Her husband, Calvin, is a professor at Bowdoin College. Mm -hmm. um, she had just had her final child, her um, seventh child. And he's, yeah, right, she's got this little baby in the house and she's writing, um, partly moved because of what she's seen. She, they lived in Cincinnati, Ohio before moving to Brunswick. And in Cincinnati, it's, it's right on the borderline of um, you know, the North and the South. Right. The Ohio River right, separates Cincinnati from Kentucky, which is a slave state. So the black women in her home are working for her. She's paying them, but she realizes what life they had come out of. Um, uh, in, in enslavement. And in fact, she tells a story about how one woman um, working in her kitchen told her that 
you know, I'm actually a fugitive. I mm. ran away. Um, can you help me out? And the family story is that they, Stowe and her husband and her brother, Henry Ward Beecher, helped this woman to the next stop on the Underground Railroad to get away from her um, owner. Um, so she's she's writing a novel because she about enslavement, enslavement because she realizes how morally wrong the separation of families is because through slavery, um, people are sold to different, um, you know, owners um, and they can't keep um, a family net. And it's so emotionally horrific. If you think about losing a child, um, uh, it's not, it's, she couldn't stand by and let nothing happen. Um, and one of her sisters-in-law knowing how great of an author she was, a writer, um, told her, Hattie, if I could use a pen the way you do, I would write something that would you know, shock uh, the nation about how horrible slavery is. So she was writing this in Uncle Tom's, uh, sorry, writing Uncle Tom's Cabin in Brunswick, Maine, in the winter of 1850 is when it starts. Um, she gets the idea from it at church. Uh, she um, sort of sees a vision in, in a way and mm -hmm. starts that by writing the last chapter of the book and then goes backwards. But when she writes it, she writes it um, as a serial, which is a weekly installment in a newspaper, which was very mm -hmm. common at the time. And then it became published as a two volume book um, by a different book publisher at the end of um, nearly a year and a half of installments. So it was published as a book in 1852. Obviously it, it was later on known to become controversial. What, what are some of the elements of the controversy and, and you know, the bigger picture that sometimes people miss about the, the, the controversy? Right, so Stowe was using a platform, a kind of literature called parlor literature, which is was very common for women to use. Uh, it's a discussion, it's the way you write a book, a narrative, um, you set the scene, you, sh you know, the space that the characters are in, and you tell the story of the characters. Um, but what she employs, also very common at the time, are racial stereotypes to get her point across. Um, and we look back at them now as scholars of the 21st century and say, oh, what were you thinking? Um, you talk about, she talks about um, physical attributes, right. skin tone, um, and taking things from minstrelsy, which was a tradition in the theater of making uh, people of color almost animalistic in a way. Um, and so those transition making the stereotypes continue and um, in American culture is not something, you know, that makes her look very good, honestly, today. Um, yeah, so it's, it's called romanticized racism. Um, when you as a white person or her as a white person wrote a story about um, uh, people of color um, trying to be empathetic, trying to help a cause, um, but comes across really as a white savior um, in, in today's culture, yeah. So let's kind of fast forward to her coming to Connecticut again, obviously, um, and the, the Stowe, uh, you know, center uh, is their connection to the the underground railroad or freedom trail there at all or no yes yes okay. the stowe center is um today um a site on the connecticut freedom trail and it's because it's the home behind me um in nook farm hartford so forest street in hartford um the last home she lived in so it's really the last 23 of 23 years of her life the really the, the, all of it in one place. And our founder, Catherine Seymour Day was a grand niece. She called on all of her cousins to donate Aunt Hattie's things to this museum she was starting. So we have a large collection of personally owned um, Stowe and Beecher family, ephemera, furnishings. It's really a pretty intact um, uh, historic house museum in that way. And we also has, have a massive collection, sorry, I didn't, it's hard for me to stop when I'm talking about collections. Um, letters, documents, primary sources, um, photographs, all of these things, you know, Stowe's manuscript pages from Uncle Tom's Cabin that she would have sent to her publisher. Mm -hmm. These rich documents to tell really the full story and illustrate in a way that's tangible. So what we've done in 2017 was restore the Stowe house. So the interior 
It'd been open as a museum for 50 years. Uh, it was time to, to restore the interior, right. bring brand new HVAC systems, climate control, fire suppression, but also tell the story in the 21st century model, which is to in incorporate interpretive, uh, interactive media. So we've got some videos, some um, sounds, audio clips. Uh, it's really fun. If you haven't been, you should come check it out. But also reproductions of items in the collection so you can touch, um, touch items and really understand and look at what it would have been like to have been in her place. Right. Uh, and what made her so upset that she had to write a book that uh, really changed culture. Yeah. So if, you know, we weren't in the middle of a pandemic right yeah. now, and the Stowe Center was open full to the public, that's some of the things uh, that people would be able to see. So I guess my question is, how has the Stowe Center pivoted throughout COVID-19? And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, what does that look like for, for the, the center now? Sure. So sadly, because the Stowe House is a small Gothic cottage, small, it has 17 rooms, but um, considered small for its time, the spaces, several of them are too tight to have more than one to two people in it uh, right. per the governor's um, guidelines. So we had to, to close for a while. We are looking forward to reopening this March. Um, that is our tentative plan right now. Um, really will be exciting to have people back inside the spaces, small groups only. Um, so that will start again in March, but all of last year, we really focused on the landscape and what we could um, do with the gardens we have. We have a new, which we're continuing into this year too, a solitary garden, which is an art installation using plants. Um, and it's for Albert Wood Fox, the winner of our 2020 Stowe Prize winner. Uh, he won Stowe Prize last year. Uh, and his memoir was called Solitary. He spent 40 years in solitary confinement. So it's telling his story. Um, um, what else? So, oh, we also expanded our uh, website to include a multimedia gallery. So all of our programmings that ha happened virtually are saved there. Um, so you can watch, um, uh, videos on women's suffrage was the focus last year, right, for the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. So Stowe's sister, who was a suffragist, Isabella, we focused a lot of our programming on her. So you can watch that. Um, yeah. Sorry, where, that website, let's, so if people yes. watch this, if they want to go take a look at this, where can they see that? Right, so it's harrietbeecherstowe.org, stowecenter.org will get you there too. Um, yep. All of, everything's there um, and links to how to contact us as well. What about, um, so besides the exterior, are there any other upcoming events? Um, yes, we have a, a full slate of programs for 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. It will be majority virtual, though we are, do have some hybrid uh, on site as well um, in the works. And of course, all of this will play out in the way that COVID allows. But our plans for 2021 Stowe Prize, which is our annual fundraiser and really the largest programming we do, is in September. And very soon we will announce the winner. It's very exciting. So Stowe Prize is uh, given out to an author, a creator, or maker who's writing on social justice themes today in the tradition of Harriet Beecher Stowe in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. That's very important work that still needs to be done today, isn't it? Yes. All right. Well, uh, Elizabeth Burgess, Director of the Collections and Research at Harriet Beecher Stowe Center, thank you very much for your time today. You're most welcome.